Without further ado, this is the toilet that we've chosen. It's actually the highest rated portable toilet. Why have we chosen this toilet? Nobody, no one likes emptying out a cassette toilet. Welcome back to the channel. We're Janine and Liam Day, a married couple in our late thirties who are attempting to live full time in the back of a converted removals truck in Britain. This week, we are doing van life in Scotland, traveling from Northumberland to Edinburgh across the East Lothian coast, searching for the ultimate UK beach park ups. Each day we travel to a new location and each night we find a new place to wild camp and with it comes a new set of challenges. Our big goal is to make it from Kent all the way around the coast back to Kent where if our van survives it we will enter Europe for the first time ever. Van life in the UK has been a hell of an adventure so far and despite all the hurdles we have faced we are loving every minute of it with our goal of leaving the rat race forever. So if you like the channel, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe and let's see what happens this week as we continue this epic adventure of Britain in Morgan, our big green removals van. Welcome back to the channel. We are just leaving Bambra. You know that really pretty place from the last episode. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. Um, in Northumbria, Northumberland, Northumbria. Um, the one with the castle right on the beach, our favorite park up so far ever. Uh, we, we had to go back then, but we're leaving now, unfortunately. We're going to Berwick-upon-Tweed. Berwick-upon-Tweed is like the last town, we believe, before you cross the Scottish border. So we're going to go and see what it's like in Berwick. Go and get some food there, because we're quite hungry. Uh, then we're going to cross the border and see what Scotland's like. There's that sort of, that no man's land that we don't really know much about between um, Berwick-upon-Tweed and Edinburgh. And we're going to go, and, and we've heard it's lovely. So we're going to go and check that out, uh, and then we're going to end the video. Hopefully, we're going to make it to Edinburgh on this video. We're going to go all the way up there and see what that's like as well. And we've also got a brand new upgrade for you as well on the van. We've got a toilet. Finally, we've got a toilet. So we're going to show you that later. In fact, we're going to install it and unbox it later as well. Lots going on. Let's see what happens in Berwick-upon-Tweed. So off we went to Berwick-on-Tweed. It was around 12-ish, so we decided to go grab some lunch. So we've just pulled up at a beach called Spithall Beach or Spittle Beach um, in Berwick-on-Tweed. And we're heading to a vegan cafe, which is just around the corner from here. And we're gonna check out, we've been invited in, gonna check out their menu. And hopefully, I'm hoping for some healthy lunch today. So we'll see. We headed to a cafe called Karmic Cakery run by a lovely lady called Tanya, who bakes delicious vegan cakes every day and also offers some home cooked food. I ordered African peanut curry and Liam got the alu gobi chapati wrap and they were both delicious. Afterwards, Liam couldn't resist their signature Bakewell cake. We ate our lunch and left to check out the beach, which was absolutely massive before hitting the road again. Well, that was an amazing meal. I'm so glad that we stopped off there before crossing the border. She told us, the, the, the lovely lady that owns that cafe, told us that um, the border's just sort of like in this town. So we're gonna across it without even knowing, I think, and go straight into Scotland. And I'm, we're both really intrigued more than anything to see what that area is like between the border and Edinburgh. Because I think most people, once again, just go straight to Edinburgh if they're gonna go anywhere. So we're gonna try and stick to the coast as much as possible on our way round to Edinburgh, potentially with a wild camping night or a couple of wild camping nights before getting there, we'll see. But yeah, it's completely new territory for us. We're about to enter Scotland. Okay, so Scotland is one mile up the road. <laughs> Using this opportunity to go along at 60 miles an hour, fourth gear, to blow out that bloody DPF filter. It's the only opportunity I've had in the last sort of two weeks to be able to do it, so I'm really really taken advantage of it. We continued onto a place called White Sands Beach where we came across a height barrier problem. Okay, so we've just parked up at White Sands Beach. Uh, we parked further back from the car park because we can't get in the car park. There is a grass verge here with a yellow line by the road, but we're parked a little bit further back, so we should get away with it. There's loads of other cars here, um, and the general vibe is that it's okay to do, although, um, apparently next week they're going to put like restrictions down here so this is probably the last week that you can park here um, so we're taking the opportunity whilst it's there and we're going to head out and go and see this gorgeous beach now 
Okay, so that is John and uh, he's a van builder and he follows the channel and he just pulled in and said that he's, um, he's well, he wants to take us on a little tour of the Slothian coast today, which is great because we haven't got a clue what we're doing or where we're going. Um, so there he goes now, he's coming back in an hour. It gives us just enough time to check out this beach, have a cup of tea, and then he's gonna take us to um, some of the hotspots, which is just brilliant. So off we went to check out this White Sands beach. The beach in itself was very wild and rugged. Some parts were covered in dry, crispy seaweed, but the sand was white and the sea was beautiful. The wind was strong and very cold, so we headed back to the van for a cup of tea. After you. Oh my God. Ugh. Time for a cup of tea or a hot drink of some sort. Are we taking shoes off? Yeah. Um. <laughs> Ow. Ah, I hurt my foot. We squeezed in a cup of tea before it was time to meet John, our unexpected tour guide. This is John, he's a subscriber. He's also a local here. He's originally from Kent and he absolutely loves the East Lothian area. And he's just offered to be our tour guide for the afternoon. So he's gonna take us back for down south because we missed out loads of stuff. Yep and um, he's gonna show us where to go. And there's a really exciting film location um, as well, coming up. Amazing. Uh, yeah. To do with Marvel and the Avengers. Watch this we... space. Yeah, so <laughs> let's go, eh? Let's do it. John's kids and John's kids' <laughs> mate. Friend. Yeah. Friend. <laughs> and, and who's Molly. this? Oh, this is Molly. Hello, Molly. Hello. Woo-woo. Convoy. So we're actually going back towards the border because John, helpful John, has told us that we've missed loads of important stuff. So we're going to double it back on ourselves, but that's okay. It's only a few miles out of the way. I can't even get out. I'd go through and go in there. <laughs> <laughs> After all that. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what an absolute nightmare. Cool, that was scary stuff. We made our way to a place called The Cove. The five minute walk was stunning and surprisingly had a secret passage through a long, dark, quite spooky tunnel to access the most beautiful small harbour and beach. Look how beautiful it is. I wasn't expecting that. Wow, oh, that's so nice. Look at that. How gorgeous. And look what that is. That is where Fat Four lives. Is that, that's the one, isn't it? That is where Fat Four lives from the Avenger film. This is incredible. Fat Four, what a hero. The cove is an extremely pretty little marina completely cut off from the outside world. Liam was extra excited as it's the home of Fat Thor from the Marvel Avengers films and his cottage stood on its own on the other side of the harbour. The rest of the cove was extremely quaint and pretty. We climbed on the rocks for better views and watched people swim and paddle in the water. This place is insane. It's so, so beautiful. Really cool to see Thor's house. But yeah, just the surrounding area is so wild. What other film locations you got for us, John? Uh, well, <laughs> next. <laughs> I can't no beat this one, it's awesome. It's an abs, it's just fabulous. Let's go. It's really, really nice. Let's yeah. go. Let's do that. Yeah. We made our way back to the van to head to a place called St Abbs, getting closer and closer to the border we crossed earlier. We drove for about 30 minutes across some beautiful countryside with stunning sea views, arriving at St Abbs, also known as New Asgard. We parked up in a tiny, camping-friendly car park right in front of the sea. Wow, he, <laughs> he wasn't wrong, was he? This is amazing. What a spot. What a spot. Potentially where we're sleeping tonight. We went for a wonder to check out the village before sunset. We headed back to the van and after saying goodbye to John, we both started to get hungry. We're gonna stay here for the night, which you can if you pay 15 pounds, you're allowed to stay overnight, which is why there are quite a few camper vans here. Um, we have realized that there are no shops that are open right now around this area. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna search the cupboards and see what we've got and make something up. If you feel the light passing you by If each day that follows is one and the same If all you need is someone to take the time Don't go looking, babe, here I am Now if you want a real good friend Good with the fennel seeds, good with the rice, good with everything. Mm. Really, really like rich tomato. Mm. 
Wow, what a park up. Um, the park ups just seem to be getting better and better the further north we're going. Um, we weren't expecting that. So really, I mean, it struggled to get out of bed this morning. It was so peaceful. All you can hear are birds, water, and there's occasionally some, some noise from divers. There's a lot of divers are turned up this morning. I don't know what they're diving for. Um, I bet it's quite spectacular with all these rock formations, actually, lots of sea life. Um, but yeah, this is Asgard. So if you're a fan of um, Marvel, uh, the Avengers and Thor, then you'll know that Asgard, or new Asgard, because it's the new, the newer Asgard that was built, um, is a really sort of famous location for, uh, in the, in the, uh, the films. Um, and it's just stunning and you can see why they chose this for this just to give you some information about it so this is Ab's head um, and we're actually going to go walk up there in a second so we can have a look down on it and get some good, better views um, there are it's 15 pounds a night to park here you can't um, free camp here unfortunately um, th that 15 pounds is the most we paid to um, stay overnight somewhere in a very very long time because we obviously free camp every night but it was worth it, so it's, it really, really is good. There's actually toilets uh, here as well. Um, as with most Scottish toilets, you've got to spend 30 pence. Um, so carry around change with you for it to, to use them, but they're really clean and they're really nice. Um, there's also a cafe nearby, not good for vegans, um, but there's still a cafe nearby if um, as well. So you can literally come down here, as many are, and um, spend a bit of time down here, I think. I'm not, I don't see any restrictions for doing a, a couple of nights. Um, and it's well worth it. Lots of hikes and lots of views and lots of beautiful scenery. Um, so anyway, we're gonna go for a walk now and go and see some more of this place. Head held high, even though it's not a lie that we meet deep in the dark. Is this the coolest sign in the whole of the UK? Killing time while pretending that This is where we're walking. We're walking down this trail here. It's gorgeous already, covered with flowers. Um, so we're going to St Abbs Head Nature Reserve or in that direction. So off we went walking up and around Ab's Head, otherwise known as New Asgard, which meant nothing to me but did to Liam, being an Avengers movie fan. Ab's Head is a nature reserve and full of seabirds using the cliffs for nesting. It also gave us a great opportunity to view our park up from a bird's eye view. After taking photos of more Avengers fans, we headed back to the van. Okay, the next destination we're going to is North Berwick. We're gonna go now north of where we were yesterday, that White Sands beach before we met John. Uh, what North Berwick is a beach that um, John's recommended to us uh, to go to. So we are going to head there right now and see what it's all about. Can't find a time where I can tell you what I feel now. <laughs> this is a nice spot. <clears throat> you know a nice spot when you see one. This is really good. And I think a few other people have got the same idea <laughs> as a few motorhomes up here. I can see why though, because it's just stunning. What is it with the park ups up here? They're good, aren't they? Bloody un unbelievable. <clears throat> but I'm really hungry at the same time, so. So am I. <laughs> How do you fancy square sausage sandwich? Yes, please. Let's do it. Definitely. We hopped in the back, emptied the shopping, and Liam started cooking up a Scottish feast of square sausage and tatty scones. We have no idea if this is how the Scots eat this, but we were very excited to try it. Square sausage looks good. Yeah, a bit better now it's cooked, but this is what it looks like. This, so it's square sausage. We haven't got any tomato sauce or brown sauce, which is a sacri which is just awful. It's not a good situation to be in, but it's a proper first world problem. So we've got, uh, but we've got fresh tomato and tatty scones, which are potato bread cake things that we love uh, and square sausages is a proper Scottish thing um, they like them square and I think there's a little bit more to them than that but these are vegan they're from Morrison's anyway well excited about this this is just a snack go for a walk come back and then we're gonna have something even more Scottish mmm 
That's really good. We've been sent something really, really quirky and very, very fun and exciting. In fact, it's probably one of the most fun products that we've ever been sent. And we're gonna unbox it for you right now because it's really interesting and a potential game changer as well. So I don't know if I've ever said on this channel before, but I really struggle with hydration. It's not that I don't like the flavour of water, it's just that I don't find it that exciting, which is why I'm really excited about this product. The reason why Janine's excited by this Air Up water bottle is basically because, did you know that you actually taste through smell. You smell something, it goes to your factory center in the receptor in the back of your throat, and that sends a message to your brain that says you're eating spaghetti bolognese or you're drinking lemonade or whatever, and this is the flavor that you're going for. And this new technology works on that by using smell to flavor water. Okay, cool, so we've got a blue bottle or a pink bottle. What one do you want, Liam? Blue, please. Okay, cool. Ooh, Ooh. it's a nice bottle, isn't it? Yeah. They also come in these packs with these pods the pods are the thing that are, they're recyclable, and these are the thing that make the technology work and happen. We've got orange and vanilla swirl, orange and passion fruit, strawberry lemongrass, cucumber, watermelon coffee, cola elderflower, peach, and I'm sure there's loads more online. So I'm gonna go for the orange and passion fruit. What one are you going for, Liam? The cola. Cool, I've got the cola one here. Let's open it up and see what's inside it. Oh, you can already smell it in the bag. It smells like uh, cola bottles. Ooh. It's good. It? Yeah. The pods come in like a teardrop shape, so I guess I just put it on there like that. I guess I just take that off actually first. Hold on, you're putting on my cola one. You need to oh. put on your orange and passion fruit one. Ooh, I love passion fruit. Do I take it out of here? You just pop it on top of the bottle, like so. And then you've got to pull it up to activate it, and that's apparently activated. So here goes orange and passion fruit. Yeah, do you know what? That's so amazing. <laughs> Extrapolate, what do you mean by amazing? <laughs> it tastes like orange and passion fruit, but you can tell it's water. Like, it's water, but yeah, it's just, it's incredible. It gives like a sort of scent. That's so difficult to explain, but it actually jazzes up the water on a really subtle level. It feels like I'm in a room that smells like orange and passion fruit aromas everywhere and I'm drinking water and I'm picking up those aromas. Cola pod on, pull up to activate and here we go. That's really interesting. <laughs> It's so strange. It's hard to put into words what, what happens with that. You are drinking water. You know you're drinking water, but it's got the essence or infusion of cola. So it's not like drinking a sugary cola drink. If cola was a flower, it would be, and it was dropped into the water. That's what it is. It's such a strange thing. The reason why I would opt to have like a cola in a, um, at the cinema or in a shop or whatever, would because I just want something exciting at that point, uh, a stimulant of some sort, something to make me excited. And reaching for a bottle of something that's got essence of cola in yet hasn't is exciting to me and i quite like it i must admit i quite like it i mean i drink quite a bit of water anyway i've got no problem with water but i think it's going to be really interesting to see what this does for janine over the coming weeks and seeing if it makes her water intake go up uh, because we really need it to because she gets dehydrated quite often so yeah if you want to try these for yourself uh we've got a link in the description and AirUp have given us a 10% discount on starter packs that's only available until the 21st of June. So if you want to try it out and you want to get that discount, make sure you click on that link now. Um, but yeah, we definitely recommend it. It's a hell of a lot of fun and it'd be good to hear what you think about them. We decided to go to town for a wonder. So we're just walking along and in the distance we can see the most obscure sort of white rock coming out of the sea. It looks completely different to every other rock. But you know why Here. that is, don't you? The rock isn't rock white, but you know why it's white, don't you? Really? Yeah. It's, it's the birds. So it's, bird. it's, it's covered in birds. I didn't realise it was white because of the birds. Yeah. But um, Liam's just said that it's it's just covered in birds and it just looks so out of place. It looks like there's a white cloud coming off it and by the looks of it from here, that white cloud are seabirds and it's extraordinary. It's like a phenomena. So everyone we've mentioned, we've come across has said, you've got to go and check it out yeah. if you're here and it's just off the coast. So we're going to go and have a look in town now and see if we can find out a way of going out to see it. Cause I think that would be awesome. I would love to. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Be really can you cool. see them now? Can you see all of the, the birds spilling off it? 
you got your glasses. You got your glasses. Got glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got my glasses. I Come on, then. Let's go and see if we can get onto it so we can get closer. Yeah. On a mission to book a boat trip, we headed into town. North Berwick struck us as a very pretty, quaint, and wealthy town. And apart from the very stark and beautiful natural and human history reminders, it gave us a feeling of Sydney in Australia. I guess it was the beach vibes mixed with cafe culture whilst feeling quite rugged at the same time. We went to go and book onto a boat tour. We do um, tours to go and see the birds. We do, we don't have any left for today unfortunately. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. They are fully booked for the um, seabird boat tour, so which is such a shame. Uh, the next one's at five o'clock tomorrow, but we have to move on, so we can't sort of hang around and wait. But we're going to pop over the other side of the marina. There's another tour company over there, and fingers crossed, they might have two spots left. So let's go. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, okay, thank you. So we've managed to get the last two boat tickets for tomorrow morning. Otherwise we wouldn't have been able to go, simply just wouldn't have been able to go because we've got to get out of town. So tomorrow morning we're going across that big massive base rock over there to go see some gannets. Woohoo! Woo Mission complete, we headed back to the van. Whew, that was a really long walk, it's so nice, it's so windy. Um, but it's really refreshing to be out there in the wind and feeling it on your face. It's really nice actually. Um, but now we're back and we're going to eat some fruit. We're not really feeling that hungry tonight. So we're just going to eat some fruit and chill and stay out of the wind and enjoy this view. It's amazing. You're not meant for this country, are you? <laughs> Awesome park up, literally parked up on this beach right here. Another winner, in our opinion. Um, so this morning we are off to Base Rock via a boat trip. Um, so we're hoofing it down the beach there now. And yeah, can't wait. It is supposed to be quite a phenomena, this, this place, um, and well worth a morning boat trip. So let's go and see what it's like. Reminiscing about the incredible park ups we have found in the last couple of weeks, we made our way to the docks to board the boat. The swell was quite big, so we were both glad we hadn't eaten before the trip. The journey took us past a small island owned by Yuri Geller, who bought it under the impression that it has treasure buried beneath it, and then on to the impressive Bass Rock. Bass Rock looks white, but only because it's covered with hundreds of thousands of gannets. David Attenborough visited this phenomena recently, and stated that it's one of the 10 wildlife wonders of the world. The circle, <gasps> with our 40 meters, oh my god! That is ridiculous! Wow. wow! That is incredible! They will fly That's amazing! The water. They will chase the fish up to 50 meters. That is a sight to behold. That's what 150,000 gannets looks like.
absolutely amazing. Wow, how amazing was that? We said our goodbyes to the gannets and made our way back to shore. That was well worth it. It was, wasn't it? It's it, it, tough call going after that, that puffin one that we went on, but yeah. my God, that was something different. Thoroughly recommend that um, boat trip if you're ever in North Berwick. In fact, I don't think you can come here and not go to that. Yeah, you have to go. Apparently, it's one of the... Um, 10 wonders of the world. 10 nature wonders of the world. Natural wonders. The, na natural wonders. As told by David Attenborough. Yeah, yeah, so it must be done. Feeling hungry for brunch, we headed to a cute cafe near the harbour for a bite to eat. Liam got a full Scottish breakfast with all the trimmings and I got a hummus avocado baguette. That's my co that was my coffee gone. Just put a finger. Can't take me anywhere. Kick it off. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> Liam dropped the coffee. The poor dog jumped and spilled water all over the floor. It's like a game of mousetrap, isn't it? <laughs> We cleaned up the disaster and left before something else goes wrong. We headed back to the van. Wow, what an awesome morning so far. Was just can't beat it. Boat trip, 10th wonder of the world or natural wonder of the world, followed by a Scottish breakfast. Now we're leaving this beautiful beach to go towards Edinburgh. So the plan is we're going to hug the coast as much as possible and try and find one more park up before we actually get into the city itself. There are a number of beaches and coastal towns along the way. Whether we're going to find anything as nice as Berwick, North Berwick, I doubt it, but we're going to try anyway. Yeah, so one more wild camping night. We've got a really awesome Scottish dinner to have as well, tea to have um, this afternoon, and we're going to unbox that toilet as well and see what that's all about so that's the plan uh, we're gonna get going we headed up the coast to a place called Abilady where we stopped off to have a quick look so this is Abilady a some sort of big estuary um, I assume it's tidal and fills up later on uh, but it's sort of like a little river that runs through it sand and probably a lot of bird life this is it here We just went to a beach called Cramond and um, the car park that we we're going to stay in was full of caravans and we just thought probably not the best place to stay for the evening so we've just checked on park for night and there's actually just a bit further down the road there's a leisure centre where you can have a shower as well and even though we've got a shower on board we will we will take the opportunity to have a shower elsewhere as well so it's a leisure centre car park but it sounds all right. So off we went to check out this leisure centre park up. Okay, so it's toilet time. Um, it's a good opportunity to talk about our toilet and have a look at it and see what it is and what, what we've chosen. Why have we chosen this toilet and what is the toilet situation in the van and what has it been so far? So as you know, we've been living around about 15 months full time in the back of a van. Most of that time is in the back of a transit. For the last six weeks, five, six weeks, we've been living in the back of Morgan. For the whole time, we've not had a toilet. One thing we have had from day one of doing full time van life is a portable urinal, which is basically just a bottle to pee in. That thing is the, our most advised and used item for a camper van. We use it all the time, not going into any details, but it's a lifesaver. Basically, you fill it up and then you empty it in a toilet when you go to a toilet. When it comes to everything else toilet-wise, then we've been using supermarket toilets pretty much mostly. Around the UK, around Britain, there are supermarkets everywhere and the majority of them have a toilet in there. If you can't find a supermarket, there'll be a Costa. Regularly, we go to supermarkets and we go to sort of chain cafes or independent cafes and actually buy some food there or have some a coffee. And that's how we've worked up until now. It's been going absolutely fine. We've done 15 months, no complaints. We've not bought a toilet up, up until now. Why have we decided to get a toilet now? The shower room was always going to house a toilet. Once the shower was built, there wasn't much space for a toilet. So we can't have a fixed toilet anymore. So it's always going to be some sort of like port loo thing. I've been, and Janine's been, up, umming and ahhing about what toilet to have for such a long time. The things to consider with toilets are, do you want a compost toilet? Apparently compost toilets work if you give it enough time to compost. Apart from that, it's not very good. Um, so we've been 
spoke to quite a lot of people with compost toilets and people have had them before and don't have them now and all the rest of it and sort of decided that maybe a compost toilet isn't the right thing to have for the van so we decided against that although that would be a really good eco-friendly way of having a toilet the other one was to have a cassette toilet cassette toilets are okay but from what i remember when i've been in a camper van who's got them is that they sort of smell nobody no one likes emptying out a cassette toilet nobody does and i don't either if i go anywhere near those black uh, waste areas um, at campsites and stuff I heave something that I would do though for the for the longevity of the van and something we might still do it's not a compost toilet and it's not a cassette toilet it's actually the highest rated portable toilet on Amazon like people swear by it there's even videos on YouTube people swearing by it without further ado this is the toilet that we've chosen Ooh. Okay, so in the bag comes with some biodegradable and flushable uh, wipes to wipe your backside with. So this is what they, they want you to be using. Um, it also comes with, these are the bags that you put into here. And so we get one off like that. So this is also a biodegradable bag as well. And from what I understand, it's literally as simple as that. That's it. So you put the bag on there, you've got a seat and all the rest of it. And then you put in preparation, you mix a bit of this powder with some water, a tiny bit of water, and you put it in the bag ready to be used. Um, then what happens is whatever goes in there, the solids aren't a problem. It's the liquids that's the problem. And they're the, thing, they're the things that smell. Well, I know the solids do as well. Um, but anyway, it basically solidifies the whole lot, including the liquids in there. And then enough so you can bag it up. It doesn't smell, apparently. And then put it into a um, respective bin. And that is it. So no mess, no cleaning, bag it, bin it no smells apparently as well we're gonna we've got extra bits of these wipes and bags and stuff so we've got a quite a big supply um obviously it's an emergency so we're going to be using this probably in the next video or the one out there and we'll let you know how it goes um but yeah exciting times <laughs> but i think for now it's worth doing until we work out we might get a cassette toilet down the line we might have to but first of all we're going to see how this works as a stepping stone maybe or it might be the it might be just good enough to use full time i just want to add to that um this toilet isn't the most exciting of toilets it's not like a big heavy duty cassette toilet or compost toilet but it is the most highest rated on amazon and that's probably because it's very 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 practical it does just do the job um no toilet from what we've seen is perfect so whilst i we whilst we're always interested to hear what people advise on what toilet to use from what we've seen it's like straight down the middle of which ones to have and we just we're just going to try this one out for now it doesn't cost much money it's in our amazon shop which is in the description so you can see how much it costs it's around about 35 40 quid um i'm just going to give it a go so the past couple of weeks we've been staying at gorgeous beach park ups and now we are in a leisure center car park which is not ideal uh the sun's just come out it would be lovely to be at a beach right now but never mind we're almost in the city of Edinburgh um, so it's not so far away for us tomorrow when we go into the city centre but now Liam's about to make us some food It's looking good, isn't it? Haggis and a turnip and potato mash, or neeps and potatoes, or neeps and tatties, or whatever the hell it is. Tatty and neeps. <clears throat> I'm not doing it to take the piss, I'm doing it to try, we're trying to <clears throat> eat the local cuisine, even though it's vegan and what have you. And it's very, very nice, it's very tasty. So we're down with the sort of food. We ate up our food and took the opportunity to use the gym. On the way out, we noticed a strange noise coming from our water system. So we turned it off and went to the gym to take a closer look on our return. Okay guys, I uh, just want to give, fill you in on something. Uh, we've got a bit of a problem with our water system um, in the van. Uh, as you might have heard in the background of some of our videos, our water pump makes a grunting noise or the 
what sister makes a grunting noise. Um, now it's every single second. We're just gonna keep the water pump turned off, but what it's meant is that it sort of alarmed us enough um, that we need to get it sorted straight away. The reason why I'm letting you know is because it could change what we do from now on. Uh, we were gonna go from head west, from, uh, west across Scotland, um, but that might change. And I just wanted to keep you in the loop with it so you know what's going on, um, but we'll keep you updated. We chilled for the rest of the evening before hitting the sack. Good morning everyone, today we have woken up at Drum Bay Leisure Centre, if that's how you pronounce it, in Edinburgh. Um, and it was actually quite a nice park up, it was completely peaceful. Today we have got something really cool happening, we are going into Edinburgh. Liam for the second time, but me for the first time, so I am so excited, I've always, always wanted to go. So yeah, that's what we're doing. So off we went to Edinburgh city on this glorious day. We made our way to the park and ride to catch a tram into the city for the day. Having never been to Edinburgh, I didn't know what to expect. One thing was made quite apparent though, it was going to rain all day. So what do you do on a rainy day in Edinburgh? Oh my god, after last night's park up and a hectic day in the city, coming to this park up is exactly what I needed right now. I thought we were actually going to a park up back in the city, like a real urban one, which is okay, but I just feel like <sighs> coming here. Um, so yeah, really pleased with this park up. After an amazing, rainy but epic day in Edinburgh, we relaxed for the evening drinking herbal teas. Good morning. Wow, that was a really nice park up, actually. We're just over the bridge from Edinburgh. Um, it has got no city vibes to it whatsoever. It's just really peaceful, very quiet. All you can hear is the water. Um, yeah, really recommend it. We had a great day in Edinburgh yesterday. Really good. Uh, Janine's first time, um, my second time, and it was a lot of fun, despite it chucking it down all day. Um, we've had an incredible week. Thank you for joining us on this week um, in on the East Lothian coast. It was completely off our radar before, it's not anymore, and now we know, now we get it. Um, and I think all the locals get it as well. Um, it, it, it's such a nice area of the world. And thank you for subscribing, and, and please do make sure you subscribe, because next week we're going to be probably getting some use out of that new toilet and see how well it works. Um, uh, we're going to be heading west in Scotland, um, towards Glasgow and the Dumfries area, Falkirk potentially as well. Um, we're going to go and probably hopefully have a go at some city stealth camping as well. Something that we thought about yesterday when we was in Edinburgh. We haven't done any city stealth camping yet, so we're wondering how much this looks like a removals van and how much we can get away with that. And also, we've got to get that water system sorted. It's got steadily worse this morning and uh, we'll keep you in the loop with that, but that's moved right to the top of our list. We aren't doing anything until we get that sorted. So thank you for watching, thank you for liking the video, thank you for subscribing, we'll see you next week. The future is bright